Mrs. Malone, stand up, would you? I didn't see you back there. God bless you. What a wonderful. Now, I'm going to surprise you. When I said a while ago, the man, my hero when I was a boy, we started looking at each other. Joe boy, Joe boy, Joe boy. When I said to the guy that sung on street corners when he didn't give an invitation, he said, How are you? Nobody wonders who my favorite preacher is. You said Tom Malone. But I'm going to honor a woman who's helped to keep the old time religion alive in America. A woman who's done as much as any woman who's ever lived in this nation to keep alive the old time religion. For over half a century she's worked for the same place. Half a century almost she worked for the same boss. Dr. John R. Rice's secretary, Viola Walden. Religion, give me that old time religion, give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. It was good for Miss Viola. Good for Miss Viola. Viola. It's good enough for me. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It's good enough for me. Thank you. Be seated, please. How long are you with Dr. Rice? How long is <laughs> A 16-year-old girl went to hear Dr. John Rice preach. Was it Walks of Hatchie the first time? Alice? And uh, we call her Miss V. Everybody knows her well, calls her Miss V. Paula Walden, her heart was knitted to that man and to his ministry, and she gave her life for him. I mean, for the work, she gave her life. When Miss V was younger, a doctor fell in love with her, a medical doctor. He asked her to be his wife. Miss Paula went to Dr. Rice and said, Dr. Rice, how long do you want me to work for the sword of the Lord? And Dr. Rice said, Miss Vola, I'd like for you to stay with me the rest of your life. She went back and told the doctor that she could not marry him because she had made a decision to spend her life, give all of her life to the sword of the Lord. I do not know a woman who's more sold out for the cause of Christ than Viola Walden, or a woman I admire anymore, or a woman who's a dear friend to this preacher and to this work. You know when you've lived a while and you watch them pass off the scene, Dr. Rice is gone, Mrs. Rice is gone, those that serve them grow more dear to you. And I've always admired Miss, Fa Miss, Miss V. I've always admired her, but I especially love and admire tonight. It's been a pretty lonely world for her since Dr. John left. But she's kept right on the sword of the Lord. Dr. Hudson's kept on his own gentlemanly way and she's still a valuable worker there. There's only one biography written now that's finished by Dr. Rice being sold around the country. It's written by a fellow named Robert L. Sumner. You may have heard of him. He's the fellow who had Tom Landry fired from the Dallas Cowboys. But Dr. Hudson wanted another one. And so he asked Miss V if she would write Dr. Rice's biography. And she's now about halfway through. And I can't wait till it gets off the press. Tonight, Miss V, we'd like to honor you for helping in your way to preserve the old time religion in America.
Brother Keith, would you bring the first thing, please? While he's bringing it, I'll simply tell you what it is. We're about to build Paola Walden Hall. These are the actual letters that will go on our new girls' dormitory. The plans are being drawn soon, and the construction starts right away. We have enough money to get started, and, uh, and we feel like it will come in to finish it. And we hope by next January, by the, by the spring semester of 1991, to have Viola Walden Hall finished at Howells Anderson College. And then Miss Vi Miss V's favorite song, "Living for Jesus." We are going to hang your portrait in your dorm in the Viola Walden Hall, and this is the portrait that will be hung in Viola Walden Hall. <laughs> you too may be taking on a shopping spree tomorrow. And you, too, will be provided a trip for you and a friend to go anywhere in the United States or Canada or Mexico or the Caribbean or Hawaii or Alaska. A dream weekend for the two of you. And now, Miss V, I'd like for you to come up here as I try to read this poem. It's called simply, turn me up just a bit, would you please, fellas? P.A. Man, turn me up just a tad. It's called Miss V. It was just a little teenage girl, once reared on Texas sod, who gave her life to humbly serve 
a mighty man of God. Her dreams were much like yours and mine, to find God's chosen one with whom to share her life as mate and settle down alone. A little house, a fenced-in yard, were both within her dreams. A child or two, a family car, a little cozy team, a little place with picket fence, a little puppy dog, a garden, and a well-trimmed yard, a fireplace filled with logs, a little girl with curly locks, a mama, a woo, a frilly dress, a child's caress, and trips to see the zoo, a child's sweet pat upon the cheek when coming home from play, fresh popcorn with a tasty scorch when night replaceth day, a little baby's slobbery kiss, a husband's love and care, a trip to get a tasty freeze, the family altar prayer. These